Hello, hello, hey, folks. folks. Yeah, we got a bit of a glare, but what are you going to do? Coming at you from a different angle tonight. Yes. How are you all doing there? Let us know if you can hear us all right and stuff. Uh, we got a little leeway we can move forward if we need to and stuff. So, it's going to bring up the old chat, as they say. So, how's your week been, buddy? Oh, uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Good, good, good. Good? Oh, yeah. A little work week for me. So, did the late show on Johnny's show the other night. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was fun. I ended up going to bed a little after 5 a.m. We were on until about 20 to 4 that's, in the morning. That's a rough night. Yeah, she was a long one, but it was fun. And we got Mr. BHB. I think that's Bruce. How's it going, Brother Bruce? And we got Sila in the house all the way from Croatia. I don't know if you are. you familiar with Sila? I'm not. Okay. Uh, I Welcome met Sila in nice a chat. Sila few weeks ago and uh, he's been tuning in basically ever since. Cool. Yeah, a Very young player. Cool. Out of, uh, yeah, it's nice to see a future uh, teenager out of Croatia. The high double cheers. Play, likes his blues. He's very considered a fuzz face and a wah. That's all he needs. I like you already. Bruce says nice shirt. Thank you. It's from when we went to yeah, see him last so. year. I'm going to try angling that down a bit. might get rid of that glitter a bit. Yeah, just a wee pinch, maybe. Yeah. Hey, we got Sean Zimmerman in the house. J.C. Smith. Good evening, folks. Thanks hey. for joining in. How's the audio? You guys can hear us? Michael Smith is in the house. Wow. Oh, all kinds of people popping in. Oh. Awesome. 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 I thought I'd pause the video for some the There we go. Wow, J.C. Smith, yeah, Sean Zerman, Michael Smith. So, uh, let's see, let's bring up the old show notes here. Oh, we got lots of stuff. Oh, yeah, off the top. Rentalfin.ca, check them out. You want a handmade guitar? Awesome very, stuff. Very, very cool stuff, man. Very, 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 very beautiful guitars. Yeah, good price, great stuff. Check them out. Dry heat for 80s. Check out gallery, cool stuff, man. And Arden's Music. Let's give them a plug. Arden's Music. We were there, I was there on the way here. Well, here, we are local mom and pops, brick and mortar. New gear. Superstore. New gear. We need an extra, you know, we got a gig tomorrow night, need another. Every now and then cables break down, and you gotta fork out some bucks and get new ones, and. Yep. So, Sean hooked us up again. Sometimes it just breaks your heart to know that you just soldered a cable and it's still pooched. <laughs> yep. Wow, we get I don't eight. know if you've ever saw your next cable, but a pain in the people watching keister. already? Jeez. Three thumbs ups. Wow. Cool. Uh, Great. So yeah, yeah Martin's, Renault Finn. Awesome. Yeah, oh, boy. Oh, oh, dude, I, I've been the same way all day <laughs> today. Dude, I know. we got to play stop, tomorrow man. night. I was like, i got to stay up late tonight to try to get my sleeping pattern back in order. Acclimatize. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, we'll cover that a little later. Oh, yes, a follow-up from last week. Um, follow-up. As you know, I pay attention to all the comments when people watch mm -hmm. on the replay, and not everybody gets to watch us live, especially those east of us. Not everyone's like Sela that's up in the... It's like nah. 2 in the morning where he is. So, uh, Judd Lofthouse, buddy, he uh, tunes in a lot on my live lunches and stuff. He's in the UK. Okay. okay. He explains why he doesn't watch the evening show. He confirms he does, in fact, like the Robo Tuners. So we have. There is somebody. There is somebody. There. Wow. Yes. You exist. However, he did say live gigging, he can understand. You may not. Yeah. yeah. But he likes them. So I'm like, well, there you go. And awesome. we put it out there. And we said. Absolutely no foul to you for it. I mean, everyone's, you know, enjoys their own tea, and that's how you take yours. Mm -hmm. Good on you for it, brother. 
We just want to know that you're out there. <laughs> so there we go. There's proof. Yeah. There and I love it. Yeah. There's the people people interaction. Like, you know. Here, so awesome. Oh wow. There we go. Yeah. Chances. Boom, 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 boom. Busted. <laughs> JJ says James is in the house. Speaking of which, uh, JJ uploaded a video the other day of his band uh, jamming without their singer. Mm -hmm. Dude, you gotta check it out. It's as trippy visually as it is audibly. Like, he's doing some cool shoegazer type trippy stuff on the guitar, and then he just threw a series of filters on the video. I'll uh, check it out. It sounds like yeah. everything up my bag. Yep, JJ's has jams. And <laughs> Bruce says, Welcome to the Twilight Zone. Yes. Yes. Somebody actually likes it. <gasps> Crazy. So, usually at the top of the show, I like to get through the news portion, and really, there's not a lot going on right now. So, uh, my news item of the week, if you want to say, Fleetwood Mac. Lindsey Buckingham, guess the boot from Fleetwood Mac. Yep. Now, I've got a couple of feelings on this. The initial one is, I want to know what Lindsey Buckingham did. To get kicked out of Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. Maybe. Hey, other than he just simply doesn't he, want to deal with all the BS that's well, in Fleetwood Mac anymore. To see, he, got the, boot, he got the boot, though. He didn't. Yeah. yeah, he didn't quit. He didn't quit. Yeah. He, he got the boot. Well, I'm wondering, was it a matter of uh, for other members to return? They said, we'll come if he's not there. And so Mick, it, as the leader. It, the only thing I wonder is just like... When you're being more of a diva than Stevie Nicks. <laughs> yeah. Now, of course, my other feeling is, uh, on it is I'm torn because Lindsey Buckingham is one of my guitar heroes. Mm -hmm. But he's being replaced by Mike Campbell and one of uh, Finn, uh, Neil Finn. That's right. Yeah, so not one, but two of your guitar heroes. Two of my guitar heroes. So, yeah, I mean, Campbell. Campbell, Nick's, Fleetwood Mac, you know they're going to be doing... I, so, oh, huh. I had a customer awesome. in, the, in the shop, and they mentioned, you know, like, did you hear the Fleetwood Mac news? Because, you know, I'm a guitar player. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. I'm like, well, that's it. I, like, I'm, I'm not following the band anymore, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, one, it's not like they're releasing any material. And two, it's not the first yeah. time Bucky well, Hams quit. Well, not only that, but I said, yeah, I, I, you know, I really stopped caring after Peter Green was let go anyway, so... Because, you know, it's like, there's always those, like, well, I'm like one of those guys that doesn't like Metallica once Cliff died. Mm. You know, so just to be that guy, I'm like, yeah, once Peter Green nah, left, nah. They did, they did nothing. Yet. They did nothing. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, I just, I, I'd love to know, I'd love to know what the story is there. Mm -hmm. You know there's a story. You know it's a, it's a hell of a story, too. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Let's bring up the chat here. I mean, <coughs> excuse me. Neil and Bruce talking about that video. JJ thinking into that. Uh, Bruce is with you. How do you get kicked out of Fleetwood Mac? I do like some Fleetwood Mac back in the 61, 64, I believe, was Straight Blues and No Women. There was that era of Fleetwood Mac, which many will say was the perfection of Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. And J.C. Smith mentioning... You know, yeah, I'm a kid in the 80s. More screwed up than the Mamas and the Papas, which was nothing but relationships. And so, yeah. yeah. That, that, hey, in our two or three, you walk Relationships and LSD. <coughs> All right, Seal is heading to bed, I'm guessing. Good night. Good night, buddy. Good Thanks for tuning in. Leave a thumbs up on the way out. Uh, let's see, Fleetwood Mac, original creators of Black Magic Woman, not Santana, made it famous. Yeah. I've had that argument with so many people over the years, and they refuse to accept it. Yeah. It's like, I, I, I don't know what to say. Look it up. Google it. Like, <laughs> it's a Fleetwood Mac song. Yeah. Santana made it slightly more famous. Mm-hmm. What can I say? Oh, yeah. Here's a little situation. So... What was it, yesterday? Today? You had this great idea for the channel. A little insider exclusive, maybe we could shoot some video content oh. coverage of you know, Miak. The biggest disappointment of that was finding out... Well, yeah, before we get that... So we'll explain. Miak is Canada's NAM, essentially. It's actually a branch of NAM. Yes. And it was the uh, Musical Instruments Associates of Canada. Yes. And it was a trade show 
and they used to do it in Toronto. I think they did it in Montreal a few times. In, and Vancouver yeah. and Montreal. In Vancouver, but then it came to so, Toronto and it just sort of stayed. Rich messages me yesterday? Was it yesterday? No, uh, yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Great idea. We'll cover it for the channel. You guys can see it. Well, Canadian Nam, what have you. Hey, yo, but of course, like Nam, you gotta be a music store owner yeah. to get in. So he says, hey, we got that connection with our buddy over at Arden's. Let's see if he's going. Let's, Let's see, see if he's he can going. get us on his staff list. Exactly. And if he's not going, can we go as reps for the company? Blah, blah, blah. So, well. so I basically, because Rich wrote this nice, long, beautiful message about itinerary, whole concept. So I just copied and pasted your text. Said, Sean... Rich just messaged me to this. Sean happened to be online, got back to me in under a minute, and it turns out they folded the show five years ago. Because when all you have is one big super chain and about a dozen mom and pop shops in the whole country, there's really a whole lot of point in putting on a trade show now, is there? <laughs> so that kind of showed how out of touch I was with the Canadian music industry, musical instrument industry. Yeah. Which was upsetting. It's, I used to work for a uh, instrument wholesaler here in the Quinney area, Bingley Distributors, and going to the MIAC trade show every summer was like it was the highlight. Well, it's now. Yeah, it, it, it was. It was better than Christmas. It was just. It was the most amazing thing in the world. Yeah. And the boss was pretty cool about and it because everybody he, was there. Like, oh, every, like they everyone. may not have the huge, humongous displays. Uh, Yamaha that, did. Yamaha had the exact same booth they used for Nam. Was the exact, it was well, like, there you go, folks. The size of a basketball court. It was. The, Freaking enormous booth. Which the makes sense too, because Yamaha does and... sell everything under the moon. Yeah. And they're like a core. Roland that. was everybody was there, represented there except for Fender. Really? But yeah. then again, Fender is always been... FMIC was not represented. At yeah. least when I was there. The year yeah. I was the couple of years I was there, because I were, I went to a Well, free... that kind of makes sense because they pretty much insist on you going to NAM. Yes, and so there was no representation from FMIC, but everyone oh, else. And Fender Days, uh, yeah. Once FMIC took it over, though, they do like I can't remember what it is. Like Sean gets a deal where they fly him out to Arizona to okay, tour like the campus. Fender and, and, yeah, Fender Days. Okay. They do their whole own little well because they can, right? Like, yeah. Look how big they are. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. When I went, it was it was just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> just absolutely amazing. Uh, Frank Cochran's in the house. Hey, buddy. It's been a little while. But yeah, so I figured we'd maybe head out and do that and give you guys a really cool look at a Canadian music trade show, but we don't have one anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's uh, yeah. Kind of, <laughs> kind of depressing. Yeah. But it would have been really cool, and uh, it was a ton of fun. I actually... My MIAC trade show and my one time I've met like somebody like really famous in the guitar community mm -hmm. that people actually know. Mm -hmm. like, I met Lee Ronaldo, but nobody knows Lee Ronaldo, so no one cares. Right. <laughs> but I've been hanging out and I met Michelangelo Badio. You guys know him, right? <laughs> Michelangelo <laughs> Badio. Yeah. So I'm hanging out in the food court eating lunch, and there's this dude across from me, and he's in like the full gear and like all the leather and like black hair and that. I'm just like. This guy's got to be like a rep, like doing demos for some company or whatever. So just like, we sit there eating his Big Mac and I'm eating my quarter pounder. So I'm just like, hey man, I'm like, do you have, do you like doing demos here for one of the companies? He's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm over at the Dean booth. And I'm, I'm doing all the demos for the new gear this year. I'm like, oh, awesome, awesome, dude. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm like, you're, you're probably super famous. I just don't recognize you. I'm like, uh, your name? He's like, oh, I'm like Lance Lovatio. And I'm like, oh, nice to meet you. And I'm like, no idea who the heck this guy is. Never heard of him before. So I'm touring the floor later on one of my breaks from work in the booth. And, like, you know, the boss would give me some time to wander the floor and that. And I walk by and he's doing one of his demos at the Dean booth. And he's got the double neck guitar thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow. And one of the road the guys sitting there at the booth is like, you know, if you stick around after he does his demo, you're probably getting to sign one of these. And he picks up one of the press pictures. I'm like, Oh, that's all right. I just ate McDonald's with that guy at lunch. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so so next year in the chain show, I'm out have front having a smoke. I'm just sitting there and I'm minding my business. Turn around. Who's standing around the corner of me? Michael Angelo Matty. I'm like, hey, man. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, we actually 
Man, last year at the trade show here, uh, we were eating McDonald's. He's like, ah, we were at the McDonald's together. I'm like, yeah, I met him twice at the trade show. So that's how cool it was. You could eat McDonald's with Michelangelo and Patty. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> so, oh, we got a few more people in the house here. Johnny Beans in the house. Dan and Jai. Who may or may not be on his way to Walnut Creek. I think he was heading up there today. Mm-hmm. Sean Blues is in the house. He says, hey, Tom Petty. I have the same shirt. We got him off food. Steph has one. Hey, I want you. Yeah, they're the official ones. Belly up and let's rock on. <laughs> Showman. Yeah. Checking in from Walnut Creek, Johnny's saying. There, well, there we are. Johnny on the road. Reporting from the road. Walnut Creek is still there. And apparently Excellent. they have internet access as well. Double bonus. All right. So uh, another one of our viewers uh, was chatting with, uh, Randall Fisher. Are you familiar with Randall? Is not right. a bell. Uh, no. I think he's more in daytime. Uh, good guy out of Tennessee. All right. Vapor. Now. All right. Yeah, started vaping. What's up? He w- he had a, a lot of gear coming in last week. Mm-hmm. Specifically, a telly and a strap. Oh, you yes. All right. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Okay, no, I remember this now. Yeah, I was going to say, we have, well, he was on last week. Don't yeah. remember the guy, but I remember his guitars. <laughs> You've all seen the meme, folks. I don't know your name, but you have a 61 Les Paul with a Bigsby? Groovy. I like that color. That's... Oh, I know. That's sporty. Yeah. I, know. I really, I really, really, really do. Yeah, so it's that. a couple of memes. Yeah, no, that's hot stuff. Yeah. Yum, yum. Yeah, I love that. Man, let's that blue, the gang killer. check this out. Besides the cameras on. Very nice, Randall. You got yourself a nice little stable there, brother. Yeah, it's not coming through too well. Oh, oh, there, there we go. go. There we go. Like there we go. <laughs> yes, well, since I'm here. Yeah, really nice, brother. Awesome. Yeah. I dig that blue on that telly. That's uh, yum, yum. Oh, yes. Speaking of tellies. Find your custom shop. Oh, oh, yeah. Specifically for a song we play. Oh, my word. Mm hmm. Matching guitar and amp. Approved by PT or just. Yes. Oh, really? I believe so. He said, yeah, okay, sure. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, so it's not like It's something. out of the Fender Custom Shop. Obviously. So, so it's not something PT sought out to have done. No, 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 no. They I think did it, and they're like, hey, PT, is that cool? Well, it's like, you know, certain things are legal in California now, and I think that's the result of certain things being legal in California now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> that's as good an explanation as any. I can't. Pinball wizard, anybody? And complete with the pinball flippers on the bottom of it. Yeah, that's... Yeah. That's it, folks. I wish we'd focus a little better. Just know that every one of those you buy helps Pete Townsend get a very, very nice sailboat. Or whatever he's into these days. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yes. And uh, hoping tomorrow this arrives in Ohio. Uh, You know what? Yeah, you were right. This is this. If I was... Yep. And it's got the zebra pickups. If I was, it would be... Yep. You know what? Yeah. The candy apple really, Mm -hmm. it does it. Mm -hmm. It does it for me. Yep. Oh, I know. I've never really appreciated... There's a few picks in there, too. I've never really appreciated that body shape, but... Yeah. The candy apple red does it. Mm Mm-hmm. I also think, like, a dark metallic blue, maybe. Possibly. Of course, I'd want one in a green, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the most rare of all. You know what? Green. Yeah. That's, <coughs> that's... Well, it's got the golden style kind of layered. Yeah. Kind of way of saying it. Yeah, you know cool. what? I mean, I'm, I don't know. It's got way too much right. gear. It's got way too much gear back there for my... Yeah, place, yeah. And I'm just going to quickly check the chat since we've been showing off a few... Boom, 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 boom. boom. Brucey. She's a nice and watching you guys from a laptop at Target. Nice. That's classy. <laughs> That's so classy, Johnny. 
Keeping it classy. Attention, target, oh. customers. <laughs> Michael Smith. This guy's watching Canucks with the guitars. And so should you be. <laughs> so that's what Michael Smith says. Got to run. My train is ready. Which because he works for the railroad. Right. Have a great rest of your evening, everyone. Uh, yeah, he's working tonight. And you got a notification or something? I assume. Oh, it's gonna be the lights. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we'll show off uh, what we we're talking about here. So. Mr. BHB himself got notification. This should be arriving at his house <coughs> tomorrow. Yeah. That's that's a picture from Sweetwater. Ben was saying earlier today, Bruce, and he's like, yeah, I was saying Rich is really going to like this. I think he's really going to like it, even though it's not his cup of tea. And yeah, he's right. I. Hey, Absolute Mayhem's in the house. That candy apple red really does it. It looks sharp. It looks sporty. Really clean. And you were talking about the stepped access here, right? With yeah. the different... Yeah. Uh, he said it was a Godan thing, which I'm... I, they well, may it's argue similar to the way they do. They may say right. it's an Eddie thing. Who got it from whom? We don't know. Yeah. I'm sure they. Know. I don't. Johnny might know about that. Stuff. That's definitely not the first time I've seen that. No, done. no, so no. And Godin's like, always been out there for. I picture like a washburn wow, or something just like that from fire the fire that has that similar cut like that, or harmonies or something weird from the. Yes, yeah, so we're we're hoping for good weather for the next 24 hours, and that uh, sweet water wasn't. BSing Bruce and he got oh, the strap. So ironically, he got the strap locks for it today. Oh, that's, right. yeah, that's, that's promising. Promising. Oh, that's a real kick in the junk kind of teaser, though. Like, here's his strap locks to the guitar, which he just ordered. Locks. Yeah, I mean, I think he only ordered them like last week. Speaking oh, of which, sweet water gear fest update. Yes. We actually have a gear fest update, folks. I booked my hotel room today. I will be staying approximately two blocks west of Bruce. <laughs> Randall Fisher's in the house. Hey, dude, we just showed off your guitar like you just your two showed guitars. Off your axes, brother. Like nice. five minutes ago. So nice score. Yeah. I love that blue. You don't need to rewind. I'm sure you can just turn your head, and there they are, and you can look at them right now. Love that blue. Really, really nice. Yeah, I just got a text from FedEx. It's on its way. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. I hope we got someone cool like Joe Wentz behind the wheel that knows how to drive a vehicle and then we'll get there nice and safe and safe. That's all I'm saying. Let's bring up the old show notes here. Oh yes, there's another guitar. Oh yeah, speaking of which, stage lights. So we're picking up what? Stage lights on the way to our gig tomorrow on night? On the way to the gig tomorrow night. Pick them up on the old Kijiji. So, so let's hope Buddy's not going to try to burn Is us. there a stand? Oh yeah. Oh, the rest of the stand with it. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I didn't even know. Oh, yeah. We don't have to stand. stand. We don't no! have to stand. No! That's why it was a steel one. And it's just one deal. rack. It's one four cell two. rack. Two. Two three cells. Oh, it's two three cells. Oh, yeah, it's buddy. It's one four. <laughs> no, we're getting no. the deal of the century. We have legit these. lights. They're clunky and old, but. Yeah, but they're still LED, too. He's so that's why I like the LED. Yeah. The old style cans. I like that optically. But they're not furnaces. But they're not furnaces. Yeah. And blowing at the power. Speaking of which, uh, we still are down a channel on the one power app, so we'll have to run the mains on one channel. I forgot that we blew the channel at six. Shoot, what are we doing about Monday? Well, we still have two channels. Oh, on right, the right, 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 on the other. Yeah, right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I just, cause it's one of those things when I think of it, folks, I got to tell them. And, well, it's not like we need to run stereo. Anymore. Yeah. So if anyone else has, uh, like, especially those smaller, cool little lighting units that you don't use, let me know. I'm interested in picking up more lights. You know, basically, like, this ones we had been borrowing off the yeah. captain. But, you know, or those little lasery ones and stuff like that. Except they don't want lasers. We're not, we're not a laser band. Unless they're cool ones. I used they to play used to have that really, really cool one. But then I don't know why they, it was one of the ones that got broke or something. Yeah. So he had a whole bunch of And this is awesome too, guys. Yeah. It, it actually got gratuitous when he had the full shebang going there. Yeah. To the negative yeah. track. Oh, I never did share the show. I never shared the show. I never shared the show. Never the show. Uh -huh. There's a show that I haven't done in a while. Mythos Pedals. Check them out. I was chatting with the owner of Mythos Pedals. I forget where I met him. Not ringing any bells. Oh, they do some really cool. Alright. Yeah, they do some cool stuff. Oh, check uh, like they're in the same vein as I think Earthquaker and stuff like that. Uh -huh. Great. Except more boutique. Okay, groovy. Yeah, we were talking about some stuff and 
Unfortunately, you can't get them in Canada. That's probably why I haven't looked a whole lot into it. Yeah. Uh, well, you can order direct, but like nobody in Canada carries them. Oh, I know. Because the problem, he's nervous. having a hard time keeping up with demand as is. So he's not looking at taking on yeah. your uh, I see. I see. And plus, I didn't want to get into the whole profit margin deal before I take it yeah. to Sean that has three stores and an online presence. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so, oh. so you're happy Canucks. Yes. Bruce is an honorary Canuck. Uh, asking how JJ's Helix is. Sounded good the other night. Oh, Showman. Hey, Ben. Are you open to suggestions? So what about both of you moving a little closer to the camera? Just looks like you have room to do that and stay in frame. Just an idea. Yeah, we can move up. Yeah. Yeah. Da -da -da -da! We asked how the audio was and stuff earlier, Showman, before you arrived, and nobody said anything, so we'll see. There we are. Hey, J.J. Collins is in the house. Hey, hey. Uh, what do we got here? Okay, we did that. We'll be able to see the steam better. <laughs> True. Uh, absolute mayhem. Uh, let's see, on my channel, on Ben's channel, just want to say thanks for taking out the fret buzz. The guitar is working great, and you fixed my guitar skills. I think that it's a lost cause. Yeah, buddy. I told you I'd give you lessons. It's convenient. It's like, oh, right! <laughs> the most random thing. So, our two or three locking nut says, Ben, did you tell the Steak and Shake story? Oh, steak right. and Shake story, Ben? I get some Steak and Shake stories. Well, see, this is that uh, we were on. Oh, it was one of Johnny's Vedas or Johnny's show. Uh, he just recently found a steak and shake in San Jose. And I said, yeah, check him out. Nice. Dude, I love steak and shake. Steak and shake's pretty And nice. then they said something about, oh, I, we got a story about that. I'm like, Thursday show, Rich has a story involving possibly a, an arcade machine of some kind. And oh, where is it? upstairs on one of the shelves yeah so we decided to stop it i think that was the first time any of us had been to a steak and shake it's, I, I wasn't even aware of a steak and shake yeah. before this we got 17 people watching this all right well tune in well, yeah. 17 people are going to hear the story of the day i defeated the claw i wonder if i scroll back far enough on facebook i'll find Oh, you could probably. Uh, Remember the, the meme I made? Yeah. If not, I think it was a profile picture. Of one for a while. But anyway. <laughs> so we're at the Steak and Shake, and we're enjoying uh, chili fries and hamburgers and all the other wonderful, fabulous, and absolutely delicious and... things that you can get from Steak and Shake. And on the way in, there's a claw machine. And I've got to think about the claw machines. i got to play them. And I'm terrible at them. Just terrible. I always wind up getting a little dollar prizes and I have to sit there about 15 minutes and there's a lineup of kids and the parents are looking angry and they're looking at me like, why is this growing? <laughs> Boom, <laughs> didn't take long. <laughs> why is this fully grown man sitting here hogging up the claw machine? I'm all aggravated. <laughs> How much weight did you drop into that thing? I dropped like 10 bucks. No, I think it was like 16 bucks. <laughs> I think I dropped like 16 bucks into this claw machine. And I was just like, I was determined to get this one particular toy. And I was like, I'm not leaving here without that. And it was this Spock doll. A little stuffy, like, cartoon Spock. Like, here's a picture of me. After I pumped 16 bucks into that puppy. And I got my Spock doll. Repeatedly yelling in the back seat, I beat the claw! And for the first time in my life, I actually beat the claw machine. Albeit at the expense of $16, but I beat it. And right below is you and Tickle. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. And this is how yeah. Richie hangs out the infield of a NASCAR race. This is good times. Good times. <laughs> we weren't sober much that weekend. Like, I can't really oh. play guitar, but I got a good strumming hand. He's like, I'll do the strumming, you do all the chord stuff. I'm like, we can do that. Yeah. I think that worked. We went through five days worth of beer and two. Yeah, yeah, that was... Hey, was Hunter's in the house. The you know Hunter. Hunter. You know Hunter. Uh, Hunter Reimer. 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 Amir. 
Oh, right, yes, yes. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that trip is very punishing on the liver. Yeah, and then I remember, yeah, when you finally stopped screaming, then my cousin in the dry sense of humor. So where's the can of chili you're supposed to bring back for the chili dogs later? I bought this. I think it, it was outrageous. I couldn't believe how much the can of chili cost. Like, I was doing the mathematics on it, and I was like... No, granted, they did have good chili there. I'm like, this, this has easily cost me four times as much as you charge me for the chili you put on my fries. But it was really good chili, and I wanted to have it on nachos later. And I think it was like $4 or something like that. It was outrageous. Like, I couldn't believe this can oh, of chili. Oh, no, it was chili dogs we are going to do. Cause, yeah, chili dogs. Yeah. There we go. I was like, yeah, I couldn't believe it was like $4 can of chili. I think I, like, I left it on top of the claw machine. <laughs> yep. In my excitement, it never made it back into the truck. <laughs> in my excitement to win one Spock, I left my chili on the claw machine. So it cost I also might have traumatized a small child when I turned There was a lot of swearing in a family restaurant. I beat the ethic claw! And the poor kid's just like, Ugh! and I'm just like, oh no, I just yelled at a small child and cursed at it. Run! <laughs> the weird part is Spock has a goatee. He does in the new series, does he? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's hipper. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, see, uh, Bruce says best thing about Which is weird, because that would mean Spock was hip, but then became unhip. And then, they messed up the timeline. <laughs> Bruce says best thing about Steak and Shake is they're very inexpensive and gratuitous portions of breakfast. See, that's, the meal was ridiculously cheap. Yeah. Like, I gorged myself for well, pennies. See, I remember dollars. the first year we were down there. And there was a $4 can of chili. They had a burger combo, fry, or yeah, burger, fries, and milkshake for $2.99 plus tax. Yeah, I, like not, I was couldn't because every combo in Canada is twice that. No, oh, easily, if not more. Yeah. But yeah, like, I think the chili. And then Bruce also, it actually cost you 20 bucks. bucks the food I ate. Exchange rate. I think he's factoring in the twenty percent exchange rate, so it actually cost you twenty bucks or something, mm. or maybe the chili and the sixteen. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Possibly. Quit doing math, Bruce. We already know you're into <laughs> beer earlier. Don't be showing us up. Hey there, end of the story. I beat the claw. I've got the Spock to prove it. Yep. Steak and shake. Owes me a can of chili. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we did that. Oh, yes. Hagstrom. Hagstrom's. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what? I, These I, phantom men. Oh, yeah. You know what? I saw that this week, and... I believe it. Yeah, I found the photo last week. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, we were going to discuss that last week. That's what it was. Yeah. You showed me that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's where I saw it. Um, I like it. You know what? It fills... It fills the demand. The amount I see in forums and stuff of people asking for an RD. Apple phones should do an RD. Gibson re re release an RD. No, no, no. They did the... What's the... Trying the to keep it in before it totally gets too bright. So there it is, folks. Uh, yeah, see, like, for those of us that like the Mockingbird, Explorer, RD... Yeah. Something different. Uh, like See, it doesn't. It doesn't look as good. Just on, up on end, it doesn't look as cool. But sideways, it looks cool. The Lee Malia, maybe I don't know. One of the new shredding guys. Oh yeah, but Epiphone just did his RD, and it's like apparently like you can't get one. They're just they're back ordered <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> JC Smith says thanks for remembering the steak and shake story to her too. Yeah, no kidding, because I totally forgot. I blame lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, and I wow. think they're gonna fill a demand. We're back a thousand. Sixteen watching, sixteen thumbs ups. Thanks, guys. I think they're gonna sell a bunch of them, mm -hmm. and it could become the new cool thing. Like it could oh. become the new wicked. Guitar. All right, so I have to ask our two or three walking that says to Bruce, "I pulled my first guitar out of the closet. It's candy apple red. I forgot how awesome that color looks. Congratulations, bro! I can't wait until you show it off, man." So what is your first guitar? I'm curious. That's Candy Apple Red. I bet you it's some piece of pointy 80s awesomeness. Knowing that guy. So I know he has a full stack. And a Randy Rhodes V. I'm betting it's got a black headstock. <laughs> <coughs> I'm curious. And then it's gone radio silent. <laughs> cricket. 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 Alright, so I only blasted through the notes. Wow. In half an hour. Uh-oh. Yeah, well, there's that, Tilly. 
You can show that one off. Yeah, you know what? That's... I mean, that for a wall hanger, it'd be cool, but I... Bet, and I, I like the fact they put a ruby in it. Like, the, the cost far exceeds what you're going to be hanging on the wall. If you're into both Fender guitars and amps. Oh, it's the on. Tela Ampla... Ampla Tele? <laughs> yeah. It is what it is. I mean, yeah, for a wall, like, if you owned a bar, like, if you owned a rock and roll themed bar, that would be awesome to hang on the wall. Mm hmm But you'd better be selling a lot of booze, because it's probably not going to be the cheapest decoration to be having hanging up on the wall. Exactly. You know, you, it's going to be far exceeding the cost of the TVs that you would have if you were actually a sports bar. Mm-hmm. All right, well, the chat's just definitely dried up all of a sudden. What's up, folks? What's going on? We're dropping viewers. We're actually talking about stuff. We're burning through material here. We've talked about an hour and a half's worth of stuff in half an hour. We even told the, we told the Steak and Shake story. That could be it right there. I'm going to have to tag Steak and Shake in this. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, he was writing something out. It was a Strat copy Epiphone. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. With matching headstock. So Rich wrong on it. the black headstock. <laughs> but they put a carbon replacement neck on the body with custom black red pickguard. What color is the headstock for the carbon? Is it black with white letters? <laughs> Bruce says, show my beer pick. So everyone gets thirsty for a beer. All right. This is what Mr. BHB is drinking tonight. Oh, come on. Sam Adams. Oh, Sam Adams Coffee Black Lager. Yeah. So. Now, is that like a stout, Bruce? Like, or, like what's a Lager with coffee added. Okay, so it's just bold literally and beer and coffee, coffee flavor. Oh, dude. I guess you can get drunk and be a that value. Alright. To each their own. Yeah, but I, then again, yeah. the other night, the other night he was drinking a Guinness stout. And I was like, well, what? When, that, like, when Guinness isn't stout enough, you have to go for a bolder Guinness? I'm like, this, he's a wild guy. Like I, I, I could see a Guinness with a cough. <laughs> you know why? It could, it could be, I'm not going to roll it. He t says it tastes really strong like a stout. And J.C. Smith says, LOL, wing it and ad lib. Story of my life, dude. All right, well, that, 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 I could see that being all right. Actually, it was shaped like a paddle, stems, and they but... carved it and put locking tuners on it. Natural maple headstock over there from R2R3. Very groovy. Very groovy. Hunter, where's your tall glassware and nice pour is effective? <laughs> true, true. I, I always just drink right out of the bottle, can, keg, mason jar. I did a mason jar the other night on Johnny's show. Yeah. Well, we finished the night with me uh, chugging a beer. Yeah. When have you ever seen me chug a beer? Mm, not very often. Well, a quarter beer. Wow. But even then, that's a lot for me. I was thinking we could show off an instrument this week. Something of yours we haven't shown off. Um, there's only two things, really. I was thinking about being the Babs usually. Pulls around oh, good. Because I was thinking sort of like when I was saying before everyone needs a $60 guitar, everybody should have a bass. You know what? We, we, we might even do a portable camera tour for this just because you might as well see the amp tags while we're at it. All right. And with its limited edition, one of a kind, Babcock artwork. Okay. We're going. We're we're going mobile. We're going mobile, folks. In the words of Pete. All right, can, is the okay? So the camera isn't blocked on that side. Okay, folks. Oh, oh yeah. Look at my mug. Here we go. And I'll try not to walk too fast. This is our practice area, folks. I'm already torn down for the gig tomorrow night. That's my office. There's the gear there, which I'm sure most of you have seen that little tour of the place that I shot a couple months ago anyway. So, this base here, Benovision, yeah. So what we have is, what is that, Squire Jazz Bass? Uh, 2013 Squire Jazz Bass. Vintage modified by Holman, not that stuff. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the reason I say everybody should have one of these is you can pick these things up for pennies. On the used market, yeah. yeah. Especially if you want, if you're not lucky and you want eBay's. I personally love eBay's. That's why. I so Ben found me one for your pennies on the dollar. We must be picking up some kind of interference or I'm blocking a mic. I moved my hand, so hopefully that helps. Well, that mic's good. Sounds better now. Yeah, I was probably blocking the microphone. Come on, guys. It's me. Hey. So, yeah. That's, uh, oh, yeah. Nothing and fancy about the base. Yeah. It's uh, got flat wounds on it. I like to cheat. I'm not actually a bass player, so flat wounds. I personally like the sound better, but mm -hmm. I find you don't get as much string noise. And yes, I'm painting around on purpose, folks. I'm a sloppy bass. So, and we're plugged into. We are plugged into. This is actually probably one of the treasures of my fleet because it's so good. Oh. <laughs> this came out of a friend of mine's studio, the great uh, Scott Tom Straffy. This used to be Shay's amp that he kept in the studio. The old Ampeg VA three hundred one fifteen. And I blocked all the that. 12 AU7 tubes in the preamp, 300 watts, solid state power. 115 with the adjustable little horny doodle wax. Uh, yeah, it's solid. You need a better production assistant. Yeah. Big, boomy, lovely Ampeg base. Custom bands. artwork by Larry Babcock. And custom one of a kind Babcock paint jobs on both sides. The other side is actually the better. Was it green before on top, too? No, no, that's that's bad. That's all bad cock. More fancy. Oh, yeah. Of cock. course, it doesn't come through. Here, try turning around so it faces the light a little better. Limitation. There we go. Check that out, guys. More one of a kind bad cock. Anyway. Yeah, I bought I bought this amp from Larry, who bought it from our buddy Rafi. And Larry Babcock also painted this. This man's an artist. The man the is an artist. Commission. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, Scott Nickerson's in the house. He's like, what am I watching? with bases so yeah so well base if you're not familiar with the j-base setup this is a stripped down version of the j-base setup instead of stacked tone controls you've just got one master tone and you've got neck pickup or well upper pickup and then rear pickup volume this is just the middle pickup kind of p bass kind of sound or closer to a p bass sound i suppose There we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're looking at me again. Oh. That's my base rig. I, uh, every once in a while, I'll take a gander out and play bass. But I just find it's nice to have Kill that around. light. Please. Whoa. There we go. Hopefully that gets us situated again nicely. Namely, I do a lot of writing on bass. Like, I do a lot of my songwriting. In the Nikki bass. 6. Like, as opposed to writing on guitar, I do most of my writing on bass. 
So I thought it was really handy to have one around. Yeah, and everybody should have, you know, exactly, for a variety of reasons. And, you know, you can pick one up for, like, say, like, like you, if you don't need a case and stuff, like 100 and a half. Yeah. Maybe, you know, maybe 200 Canadian. Yeah, if you're really lucky and you hold out and you're not terribly... J.C. Smith likes the base. You're not terribly fussy about what you're looking for. You're probably for 100 and a half. You'll find probably a base and a little cheesy craft in there yeah. on the used market. Well, dude, I, I love I, this I my base through my 412 cab. I love it. It's so punk rock. The big one. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What I love the most about having a base around the house is the finger stretcher. Like, it's playing bass. Like if you make a point, like, for every other time you pick up your guitar, you pick up your bass and play it that day, you'll notice the difference mm -hmm. in your playing in a week or two. Like, absolutely. wow, I can do big, gappy finger stretches. I absolutely. Mayhem more. brings up a point. Do you need a bass amp? No, not necessarily. Depending on the speaker configuration you want to do. There's keyboard amps that have single 15s. There's guitar amps that have 10-inch speakers. You can plug it into a laptop and run it through an amplitude. Yeah. Or, an amp or uh, if, a you're, if you're or... playing at a place that has a PA system, that's a great thing about a bass. You can plug them directly into a mixer and they sound fine. Yeah. Some sound guys might not be impressed that you're doing abuse to their speakers. Yeah, but even like in a recording situation, how many people plug right into the board? Usually through a DI, though. Okay, so you got a DI. Yeah. All right, well, so if you're running a DI, it's a bit different. But yeah, if you're running just DI for a house and whatever. But uh, what I don't advise... Yeah, Sean says, like, guitar speakers don't like the low hertz. What I don't advise is running a bass into a guitar amp. I've done it without notable damage to an amp. Whereas I prefer to do it. I've intentionally done it to break in a speaker. Yeah. But... I've also had people do it. I also don't mind abusing abuse my equipment. speakers and amplifiers of mine that were never the same again. Been. Actually, no, I used... When I played bass with Rory, I used that amp, didn't I? Mm -hmm. I didn't use my 412. I was thinking about it, but yeah, I borrowed your bass and your amp. That's right. Yeah. Hey, man, got a gig in a couple hours. Can I borrow your whole bass rig? Sure. But yeah, that... I still ran it through my pedal board. Cause... Running through a guitar head into a bass cab can yield some really excellent results. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I when, tend to avoid running a bass into guitar speakers. Unless you're just, like, you're, you're not terribly concerned if the speakers can go. Like, you know what? I'm going to run into this old cheesy 112 that I picked up in the pawn shop because it just sounds rad. And if the speaker goes, it goes. Then, you know what? You're, you've got a Well, that's the other thing. Like, you've got a gnarly bass tone. Showman had point. a nice Fender Jazz bass, had it for a few months, sold it for a small profit. Yeah, and that's the other thing. You can always minimum get your money back or turn a small profit yeah because there's always out, guys really, yeah. like us that yeah i wouldn't mind a base and of course wait if money gets tight that's the first thing to go is the base yeah. quite often yeah hey blackie dh is in the house i'm late as usual yeah you, you got women i've uh, yeah, got a lot of women running around various aged women he's so young dude yeah having a base around never never the worst thing yeah, which only, yeah, seems like bass guitars sell easily. Yeah, which, and it's weird because bass players aren't, they're more of a throwback and most bass players have one, two, maybe three basses. And they're fussy. And, they're, they, and they are fussy. You but don't find bass players as much as guitar players like that'll just buy a dozen basses buy, or a dozen. buy an instrument on a whim. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh wow, yeah. that's a good deal on an SG. I'll buy it. Yeah. Like, you don't find bass players really do that. They're like, yeah, like no, I really like the bass I've got. Or if I'm buying another bass, I'm getting a blah, 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 very specific right. bass. Cool. And I always, I've always thought tables. bass players really know what they want out of an instrument. Yeah. Like, guitar players, I find for a lot of part, we're pretty, we're pretty loosey-goosey. Like, there's guitar players who go, you know, this is what I want, nothing else will do. Mm -hmm. And then there's guitar players who's like, ah, it's got six strings, it's got some pickups. Oh, it's like, yeah, it's a string thing. There we go here. JC says, I've but, been working on transferring bass riffs to electric guitar for improv and inspiration. Yeah, just like you, what you were saying earlier. Yeah. And I'm not reading that comment, Mayhem. That's all I'm saying. I need new glasses is what I need. Oh, you know what? I'm not showing off any pictures, so I can actually turn up the brightness on my phone again. That'll help. And I'm still doing... 
Let's see, uh, Sean says, help just try to keep up with the cost of bass strings would kill you if you had 25 or 30 of them. Yeah, but you only have to change them once every year or two. It is that. There is that. Yeah. Imagine how long bass strings, if you had bass elixir strings, would they last a decade? Yeah, they're like 90 bucks a pack, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's something like ridiculous like that. I remember Babcock telling me that they're just something ludicrous. Somebody at one of the music stores was trying to push him on him and he just yeah. laughed in their face. Oh, yeah. Especially, like, like, oh, well, you'll never need to change your strings for like three or four years. He's, He's like, like, I don't now. Yeah, I don't as it is. <laughs> He's like, the only times I change my strings are if I get bored and want to switch over to flat wounds for a couple months. Yeah. And then even then he keeps his old strings half the time, puts them back on. Which is how I wound up with those flat with those flat wilds actually came off Larry's P base. He yeah. put them on, used them for two days, and he's like, eh, no, nah, that's it. This is the last time I'm doing that. I'm never putting flat wilds on this thing again. It's it's a round wound base. <laughs> and when I bought that base, I was like, Oh, I need to buy some flat wilds. He's like, Don't. Why? Are you that against them? No, I've got a pack at home that have two days of use on and you can have them. I'm like, oh, awesome. Scott Nixon says, I definitely want to get a bass at some point and didn't think of the benefits it would be of playing guitar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like any more motivation to get one. The stretch between these two fingers, like, it's it really <laughs> funny. You mentioned that. Showman's just stretching. like, what are the benefits of playing bass for guitar playing? Stretching. Uh, stretches and the finger dexterity for doing rundown stuff. It's like, most guys, that's how you can always tell a guitar player because just naturally you always open up. But yeah, bass players are like that. So, and the other thing is uh, finger strength. Like just from holding down the thicker strings, it's <laughs> yeah. It I've heard a few people do that. Uh, our two or three saying his bass player boiled his strings in high school, couldn't afford new ones. My bass player, my uh, good buddy Dan in high school, that's what he used to do. If you take your strings off when they're starting to sound a little dead, boil them in a pot of okay. water, put them back on the bass. Yeah, Jeremy Smith in the house. Ben still sexy as ever. I try. There we go. <laughs> I try, buddy. <laughs> Good to see you, brother. I haven't seen him in oh, wow. a year or two. Probably. I can't even remember. Let's see. Uh, Showman says, and I really need some dexterity. Need to stretch them out a little more. Yeah, man. I got into playing scales the other day. I was actually practicing. Oh, I blame Mayhem because he came in asking about scales and then I. I ran through some scales to show mm -hmm. them, and then I started doing like your standard do re mi fa sol la ti do, you know, major mm -hmm. scale, and it came back. And I haven't done that. Who knows how many decades, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking high school classical guitar probably was last night. It's a da -da 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 -da. I'm like, oh, it's still there. Okay, and then I started playing on that, and oh yeah, I blame him. <laughs> We're all saying hey to each other and such. Time there, not too shabby. Awesome, awesome. Hey, you guys, have any other questions, comments, stories we forgot to tell that apparently I promised to tell? On, I'm assuming that could have been a live lunch. That could have been, like, say, on one of Johnny's shows, hanging out in the chat on Steve from Boston last weekend. Oh, okay. Bruce says, great show. Awesome. Glad you like Thank it, buddy. You, Bruce. I hope you like it. You spent money on a t-shirt. Ah, you know what, Bruce? I'm going to put this one on you. You're going to have to remind Ben, say, next Wednesday, to pack an 18-volt adapter for next week's show. We're finally going to do something I mentioned in, like, our second episode. Oh? And we're going to do the Grand Shanahan Chorus Shootout. <laughs> oh, and for the Cold Cat. The cool, yeah. And you cool see, cat. it's funny enough you mentioned that, because I was thinking about that very chorus pedal for some reason. I must have been listening to something that had chorus in it. Mm -hmm. And I remember how much you could use that as a lead boost. It had such oh, a it's volume, such a volume boost. That was the big. That was the only reason I retired it. Is it just has such a volume jump? But I love it. It's one of my favorite yeah. Chorus. Bruce, take note. Remind me to bring yes. an eighteen volt power supply. The Grand Shanahan Chorus Shooter. Don't type it in the chat now. <laughs> of the three chorus pedals that I've owned in the last decade, or, or anybody so. else for that matter, message me if we're friends on Facebook <laughs> to remind me. And you guys will get to hear three chorus pedals get shot out. Oh, well, that's an easy answer, Mayhem. So we only do one, I think. Right. Since Rich is wearing a Tom Petty tee, what's your fave Tom Petty song to play live? Um, now, if we count, are we counting Wilburys as well? We, we need 
You sure remind me to remind you. All right, Bruce, I'll remind you to remind me. Uh, oh yeah, since we only play the one, I mean, that one, it is one of my favorite it is. songs, but you wrecked me to be doing the Honey Badger. Yep, uh, if you go back on the channel a while back, uh, there's a video of it if you haven't seen it already. It's the, la I think the last game, one of the last games we played, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, there's actually a video on our Facebook of yeah. us doing the Honey Cover. And we may have some more videos to post after tomorrow night. Jane's lady friend ah, asked if she could uh, shoot some more video. And she said she'd give it a shot. Yeah, because she did really like titles the... or something like that. I don't know if you saw those. Uh, but... she, oh, the, the new edited ones? Yeah. No, I haven't watched them yet. I just have seen the original Yeah, it's like I uploaded it and I played it just to make, yeah. you know, as I'm checking something. And then all of a sudden I'm like, you know, it comes up like whatever, like Belleville Club on the state. I was just like, oh, snap. Thanks. You know? <laughs> I don't take the time to do that kind of production work. Damn. No, I haven't actually checked them out since she reposted them. I just saw um, the originals. Scott Nickerson says, want to learn to pick with my fingers on guitar. I'm sure playing some bass will help with that. Not really. That's different. No, it's a whole different... I mean, it... Because you're well, not finger-picking chords on a bass. It'll help with finger, like, strength. Good to be king is a good song, man. But, yeah, it's, it's a whole different animal um, than the finger-picking style. I'm going to just to say different, I'll choose for favorite song to play, because I, I, I get to show off of Rattled. We do the Wilburys song mm. Rattled, and you know we do it full out, Stray Cats, man I wish I had more, like I wish I had my own reverb setting and delay setting just for that song, <laughs> uh, and I just go to town <coughs> in that thing, doing all kinds of bends and this and that. So yeah, get my rock belly on with it. So, oh, we're doing it on time. Yeah, we're, we're we should probably want to thank everyone for coming out. Yeah, we're yeah. I'm I'm feeding too. I'm starved and I'm. Thanks for tuning in this week, folks. Well, what do we got here? Well, I'm playing with my hair. I'm going brilliant. Uh, R two R three logging in. I watched Molly's Telly Warmoth build last night. That roasted flame ma maple neck is sweet. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't think you know Molly. Molly's a we'll say a friend of ours. Um, Living in Japan, mm -hmm. uh, originally from Cincinnati, he builds some stuff, and yeah, he just did for his fiftieth birthday, I think, that the build. It's uh, basically a warm up telly he did. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, the neck is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you just do a search for Molly, just M U L L Y. Go. Yeah, guys, if you're not already subbed to him, go give Molly a sub. He goes live all the time. Uh, usually on his way to him from work and stuff. Him and his wife Tomiko. We'll be talking, well, we understand Molly. We don't understand Tomiko too often. Well, depends on if she speaks English or Japanese. I guess she speaks English and Japanese. Try to think now. He's always on whenever I'm commuting to work on my way home. It's like, literally, I get in the car. I'm not even on the highway yet. Molly's live. I'm like, oh, he's always live, and he's always off by the time I get home. Although he did hang out in Johnny Dean's channel the other night, so we just have to hang out. He called in, too. Always, always a pleasure when Molly calls in. Yeah, Dry Heat 480. Hey, Dry Heat 480 is in the house. Uh, Molly is cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Awesome. Yeah. If you're new to the channel, hit a subscribe. Make sure that bell looks like it's rung. If you haven't been getting notifications, YouTube's been screwing up. Not everybody's oh. getting notifications to every channel that they have the bell ringing on. Cal Bizarre. So, unring the bell and re ring the bell, and that will reboot it or whatever. Roasted maple just came on my radar. Scott Nixon said, yeah, dude, don't. It's a slippery slope. It's beautiful, but you gotta pay. And then just start picking at the individual strings. Are you trying to go, oh, okay. You know, talking about finger picking. Mm. Cool. So yeah, um, hit thumbs up on your way out if you don't mind. Doesn't cost you anything, and it helps us out. If you're watching this after the fact, comment. Let us know if we're doing a good job or we're just horrid and you're never tuning in again. And we'll say, okay, we get it. Mm. We're cable access at best. We're, we're Wayne's World, but with like a sad we can play better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there you go, gang. So thanks again for tuning in, and yeah, awesome stuff. I uh, I'll be on Sunday at my regular time for once, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 percent what? Try to talk. 1 p.m. Pacific time, which is what? 9 p.m. in the UK, Greenwich Mean Time. Let's go with that. 
You're doing a great job, guys. It's relaxed and fun. It's not pushed or contrived. Showing oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, to see the problem is we ad lib a lot. I take some basic notes and I'm like, okay, these four words represent five minutes of content. We'll see what happens. So, yeah, so thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. Those in the chat, we love you. You know, and I'll see you guys probably. Uh, you won't see me in the chat or on Johnny Beans tomorrow night. We got the gig, as we're saying. So I'll catch those on the replay. So yeah, tune in Sunday afternoon right here on this channel. And I don't know, I'll work on a guitar or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the 67 Telly will go on the bench. It needs a cleaning. Who knows? It always needs a cleaning. I, think, oh, yeah. I don't think I cleaned it since I last gigged with it. That's the problem. Because mm -hmm. I remember to show it off on this show, I finally trimmed that high E string that I broke. <laughs> yeah, so, she's, she's probably not been cleaning that. Yeah. Yeah, no. Have a great one, folks. Have a good night, folks. Cheers. Take care.